Hey guys, I've been having some problems with my Dreamcast lately, especially reading CDRs. It would not read CDRs to save its life. I downloaded this program that I wanted to run on the Dreamcast, not even a game, just like a, a homebrew program. You'll see what it is in one of my upcoming videos. And um, I downloaded this program and I burned it and it would not read it. I tried an hour straight turning it on and off and it would not read this CD. I must have tried 50 times. Uh, I looked up on the internet, I found a, an easy way to modify the Dreamcast to help uh, help it read CDs better. I'm going to show you what I did and it worked. Um, I've got it now. I actually put this CD in and it read it the first fucking try. So check this out. First things first, take the modem off your Dreamcast. You have to take the modem off to get to one of the screws. There's four screws holding the Dreamcast cover on. They're just standard Phillips screws. Get those four screws out and turn it over. Once you've got it turned over, pop the top. Comes off just like that. Okay? So here's the system. you got your power supply here. You got your main board underneath here. Looks like there's a battery in it for some purpose, uh, storing the clock and whatnot. Uh, here's the fan here on the side. Here's your power switch. And here's the switch that uh, tells it that the door is closed. Anyways, this is the GD-ROM drive, obviously. First things first, make sure the laser assembly is all the way back. Right now it's not. Now it is. The reason it needs to be all the way back is I'll show you in one minute. Second thing you need to do is these wires here. Get them out of these plastic clips. There's a plastic clip here and there's a plastic clip here. These wires will be under the plastic clip. I've already taken them off. Okay. There's three rubber mounts holding the GD-ROM drive in place. There's no screws. There's nothing. Literally just pull it up and over. Now here's the ribbon that connects the laser drive assembly to the actual main board. That's why you need the laser all the way back. If the laser was up towards the motor, we wouldn't have this clearance here to flip this out and over. Now, this is going to be hard to show, but once you get this flipped over, there's a little screw here. I'm going to have to go into like a macro. I'll take a picture of it. So here it is in the picture. This little thing actually rotates. It doesn't look like it does, but it does. It's actually a little, uh, like a petometer, I guess you'd call it, uh, variable voltage and whatever it's adjusting. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the speed of the drive I've heard, although it looks to me like the motor is hooked directly to the uh, power supply. I don't know if it's the actual speed of the drive or if it's just a voltage to the laser. Um, but uh, either way, uh, it was basically dead center. There's a little flat spot on it, and that was dead center facing up. I moved mine about a tenth of a rotation clockwise, and uh, that did the trick. I tried going counterclockwise first because that's what a lot of the, uh, the tutorials that I had looked at had, had recommended. They had recommended trying clock counterclockwise first. I tried counterclockwise several times, no avail. I brought it back to the center and then moved it clockwise, like I said, about a tenth of uh, full rotation. And uh, first try, it read a CD. So um, it may not be a permanent fix. It may be a sign that the laser assembly is going. And in my honest opinion, that is the most unreliable part of the Dreamcast is the actual drive assembly. Uh, but like I said, it's done the trick for me, so I'm not going to complain. Uh, I just thought I'd show you guys that. Uh, some of you may have the same problem. Mine was mostly having problems with CDRs, but it was also having problems with real games. There was maybe one in three times you turn it on with a real game in it that it would not boot the real game. So, So there you go.